You are now listening to the Too Short for the League podcast, hosted by Caleb Kingston. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the show. Thank you to our sponsors, Goak and Face Your Fears, for bringing the show to you guys. Thanks for all the support. Like, follow, subscribe, do what you need to do. Today we have a great guest. He currently plays for the East Perth Eagles. He's from America. He's played college ball. Welcome, Taylor Young, to the show. Welcome, man. Appreciate y'all for having me. Uh, Appreciate it. (laughs) (laughs) Took me a while to get here. Got lost. Oh, really? Uh, Yeah. Wow. Just just one of the, uh, I don't know, my phone told me to go one way. Just one of the exits was, like, blocked off because of construction. So I had to go, like, get off, go all the way around. So dumb they'll do that during Christmas time as well. That makes no sense to me. Like, once they blocked off the shopping center car park, like, in the middle of Christmas. Yeah, that's stupid. It was so dumb. What what have you been getting up to in your off-season? Uh, nothing. Um, before my partner took off, Bri, um, she's playing in, uh, in Ireland right now. Oh, wow. uh, basically, we was just doing whatever we could together, working out, chilling. She wanted to go eat, I go eat. Otherwise, I'm sitting in the house. Uh, <laughs> so since she's been gone, she's been doing a lot of stuff with the club, um, training kids, doing some programs through the club, and just helping them out. And then I started like my off-season training probably two months ago. Yeah. So Did she she moved clubs as well. Yeah, yeah, she's currently entertaining a few offers from other places. Yeah, so she'll probably make her decision. So her, I'm pretty sure she's just focused on where she at right now. It's pretty cold over there. <laughs> are you going back home for Christmas or are you staying? Nah, there? I'm here. Um, I told my family a while ago they probably gonna have to just come see me. Damn, yeah. what Christmas plans are you doing? You going to the beach or something? Or? Uh, actually, Tim Simons invited me to uh, just chill with his family Christmas nice. Day. Yeah. So, Today I'm with y'all, then I'm going back, probably getting in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then tomorrow, uh, I'll probably just do the same, man. Is that one of your favorite things, just to chill? Man, I'm the most laid back person ever. Like, I, I go out probably like, nowadays it's probably like once, once a month. Yeah. Maybe less. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I really uh, just. By the time we went out, you were there for like five minutes, and then, like, yeah. we went to that. What type of bar was that? That Mexican? See, I don't even remember. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't even remember. Damn. But. Yeah, even we went to some Mexican place and then we're like, this is lame, let's oh, go. And we went to walk to market. That. Yeah. And, and you were was, there for like five minutes. Yeah, I was done after that. My, uh, <laughs> once my body tell me it's time to go to bed, I kind of listen. <laughs> That's good though, as yeah. an athlete, you got to. Yeah, true. It's a good while understand. to learn. I've been doing this since 2017. I probably learned probably like four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, so I had my fun. I'm chilling now. Yeah, well, let's get into it, man. Yeah. How did you get into basketball? Honestly, uh, my father, uh, my real dad, he played overseas a few places. And then, so my mom just kind of grew up around it. Mm-hmm. So once they, like, separated and we started, and I started showing interest in it, she just gave me a basketball, and it was just kicked off from there. How, how old were you? Well, I started when I was probably about five or six. Oh, really? Yeah. In the U.S.? Yeah. What part US. of the U.S. are you from? Uh, I'm from L.A. Oh, yeah, so it's like yeah. high competition yeah. over there. Yeah, so, yeah, I grew up playing against all those dudes that's in the NBA now, like Drew Holiday. Um, Russell Westbrook, Jeez. Demar Derozan, Clay Thompson. You cook uh, any of them? Or? Nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, I was probably a late bloomer. I didn't start hitting hitting my stride till I would say about like my junior senior year of high school, mm-hmm. and then grades kind of got in the way. I went to uh, went to college, uh, Washington State, with Clay Thompson. Yeah, and then I kind of lost my scholarship because I wouldn't go into class. I was doing all the stuff. You were chilling too much. You were trying to sleep. I was probably the opposite. I probably should have been sleeping, but I was just partying. College lifestyle. Yeah, pretty. It was a college town. It's a small town. uh, Yeah, like to the east, going towards Spokane and Washington. So it was just free reign. That was my first taste of like being away from home. So it was kind of like a culture shock, and I. Went about it the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. How tall are you? 6'2"? Yeah, I'm about 6'2", six 6'3", six depending on what shoes I wear. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hit your growth spurt in senior year? Or? Nah, honestly, uh, like, high school I went to, we were small. Yeah. So me and my stepbrother kind of played the bigs, and I was probably about 6'1", six 6'2", six my freshman year. Of high oh, school. that's tall for yeah, you. Yeah, so. Yeah, eight, you know. Yeah. So, honestly, when I hit... My freshman year, me and a few other guys that we all went to the same high school, we all came in ranked like in the country. And then just because I wasn't ready for it, I kind of had to work my way up and fell yeah. out and then work my way back up and stuff like that. So, so you're like a skinny 6'1". Yeah. Yeah, to put on some size. Yeah, I just started putting on weight probably when COVID happened, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the only benefit I could take from it. Yeah. yeah. Goak is a proud sponsor of the Two Short for the League podcast. Go 1% and conquer with Goak. Strive for getting 1% better every single day. Goak isn't just a sports brand, it's a movement. 
The movement aims to build a rich basketball culture throughout Australia and their practical gear and clothing lines are specifically designed for hoopers of all ages and skill groups. The adaptability of GOAC's gear allows you to play indoors, outdoors, anywhere, anytime. Go 1% and conquer with GOAC. Face Your Fears is a proud sponsor of the Too Short for the League podcast. Face Your Fears was established by former MMA and heavyweight champion Soa the Hulk after hanging up his gloves. Now an author, actor, coach, and public speaker, Soa is also a strong advocate for mental health. To learn more about Soa and Face Your Fears, visit faceyourfears.co. So you're about 6'1 as a freshman. Is that when you knew you could like make it as a pro or was it like way later? I feel like internally, it's just something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. Like, it didn't probably get realistic until after my sophomore year, after I left Washington State and then went the JUCO route and then got to the next four year I played at, which was in Nebraska. I had some success my uh, my sophomore year. And then, like, some random team from the Netherlands contacted my coach, and he was like, nah, he still got three more years of college left. Mm. Like, <laughs> we're good. So that's when it kind of became, like, realistic. And then just from there, I, that's pretty much all I was kind of focused on. So you're, like, you're a pretty chill guy, yeah. obviously. What was your workout routines like through high school? Or were you just like rocking up? and? Man, to be honest, I didn't really like really start working out until like my junior, senior year of college, like through high school. We just like every summer we just, you know, you got the AAU circuit. Yeah. So we did that. We just All we did was just hoop, man. Like we just meet up at a, at a gym around the city and just just get up and down. You go, you go play a game, then go to McDonald's after. Yeah, like, like we play the game, and we go go to my stepbrother's house. He lived like um, down the street from one of the gyms we played at, um, and then we just like played the game and chilled out. And then you know it's the weekend. We might go to like a house party or something, but it's LA, so you never know what can happen. I've been in some situations where that's probably why I don't go out much now, just because yeah. anything can happen. So not here though. Yeah, not not really. But I've been, I don't know, man, just as an American out here, some people just kind of, like, try to test you. Yeah. Yeah, like, I feel like, a f- what was it, like, a month ago, we had all went out, like, people from East Perth and uh, our SNC, like, as a as a group, we just went out. And we were just chilling, and then a fight broke out, like, in market, a fight broke out, yeah. and then after that, I was, after everybody calmed down, we was just, everybody was just going around their business, and then I'm chilling with, um, with Bri, and then there's a few of the guys, and it's just this dude just staring at me. So I'm just like, like, what's up, man? You all right? <laughs> and it turned out like he was just trying to push everybody's buttons because he knew like the head of security there or something like uh-huh. that. So he was just trying to show. I don't know. But, yeah, so I kind of. I can tell you've been out a lot because when we went out and we were in line waiting, you're like, nah, I'm not waiting in line. Let me just go pay for the security. Honestly, man, I don't, I don't really like waiting in line anymore. <laughs> yeah, when I, like, by that time, I'm probably, especially by the time we actually get out, I'm probably like. You got about an hour and a half, two hours out of me, and then I'm probably going to leave. Yeah, so. man, I, I hate waiting in line, too, but I'll do it. I'm never going to security guard and asking <laughs> to let all us in. <laughs> you just went, that's just kinda, man, it's 50 bucks. Yeah, us in. <laughs> that's just kind of how it is back home. Sometimes you know the person running the uh, running the lines or whatever, he might just let you. Um, it's messed up, but he might just let you cut the line. So mm. first I ask if we can just, we can just, can I got a few people, can we just cut or whatever? And he'd be like, nah. And I'm like, all right, man, how much? <laughs> Just go from there. <laughs> sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Sometimes they send me to the back of the line. Don't hurt the ass where she yeah. can tell you no. Sure. Yeah. I might start doing that shit. <laughs> hey, friends, let me in. Yeah, shit. What not? was your um so w- as you were playing coming up, most kids have been told from other guests that we have, you know, you gotta work out, you gotta eat right, you gotta sleep right. Yeah. Obviously you seem too chill, <laughs> like you were sort of just rocking up doing your thing. <laughs> What would you if you could go back? Would you do the exact same thing again? Or nah, I would have probably had a more singular focus because you know, as a teenager, you're going through all the hormones and mm. puberty and stuff like that. So you kind of start seeing what's out there. So especially playing basketball, you attract more attention and people want to be around you and stuff like that. So I kind of in, indulged in that lifestyle in an early age. So I think that's kind of what hindered me. Mm. But going back, I probably would have started lifting weights at an earlier age when everybody else was maybe actually getting up in the morning shooting before school and mm. stuff like that because like after school we was just going back to my stepbrother's house and either on the game or playing outside in his backyard like yeah we was hoping but it wasn't like anything focused so your skills are like just purely talent ba- based at that age yeah i think so and like shout out to my stepdad uh, my stepbrother's dad he was my first coach and mm-hmm. he kind of he kind of as he was coaching us, he just kind of gave us the tricks of the trade, like because he he trained us to be guards because he knew we wasn't gonna be that as tall like as a 
actually proper big. So I learned guard skills at an early age. And it kind of just translated to like high school basketball where everybody's, you got probably got one or two dudes that's probably like six, seven, six, nine, and then the rest of them are, look like me. So mm. it kind of just kind of translated well there. And then when AAU started, like after the basketball season, I was able to play guard because, you know, it's the best players from around the city or whatever. So I was able to play uh, point guard, which is what I play now. Mm. And it's just, that's where I got most of my looks from in terms of like, the next level of like college was playing AU because I was in the right position and I was in a place where I can thrive. Whereas in high school, I was essentially one of the tallest players on the team. So they were <laughs> like, crazy. yeah, they would throw me on the block and I had to go bang with people Damn. Way bigger than me, like football players and stuff like that. So <laughs> did you play gridiron? They tried to get me. I don't like getting hit. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they tried to get me to play wide receiver because yeah. I'm fast and I can run and catch. So, Jump? Yeah, a little bit. So they tried to get me to play football. I tried maybe, I think, for like. I want to say three weeks. and Then, then one hand, you're just like, Yeah, nope. they had me go across the middle, and then I got laid out. And then my mom, it was like one of those, like, it's like freshman, sophomore, JV, varsity is top of the top. So I was playing, like, sophomore or something like that, and I went across the middle, and I got hit. <laughs> and after the game, my mom was like, yeah, you're done. Just go ahead and tell the coach you're not coming back. So between football and, uh, like, running track and field, that was oh, yeah. that's that I got. A, they wanted me to do that a lot because, like I said, I'm pretty fast. I've always been fast. I've never worked. Well, races. On it. Yeah. So. Yeah, like what one? Like hundred meters. Oh, like hundred meters. Okay. Yeah. One thing I don't do well is like long distance stuff. Yeah. Like we did a fitness test. Uh, what was that? No, this Thursday. Mm -hmm. Um, this week, I didn't do well in that because <laughs> it's just that's the yo -yo test. like just getting by just off pure time. <laughs> yeah, man. Like I don't know. I like especially. I don't know. I don't like running. Mm -hmm. I don't like walking very far. Like, it's like shooting. <laughs> yeah, I, the only time I use, like, I feel like my speed is, like, actually worse, wor like, worth something is, like, when it's, like, I'm going for a layup or I'm cutting to the basket or I'm trying to cut somebody off. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't like running for the sake of running. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I think I was just suited for basketball. <laughs> What's it like getting recruited in the U.S.? Um, I think it depends on if the teams actually want you or not because i've gotten letters of just more like they send you like a questionnaire first they send you like a questionnaire you fill it out and then once they they probably contact the school and then once they feel like your grades are up to par then they'll start sending you uh like interest letters which is like a detailed write out of like you we're interested blah 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 right, yeah and then after that then they start calling you um like when i was in high school it was like 2000 to 2008 so i wouldn't get nobody was really on tech you, i couldn't get a text message yeah sure that. so it was like calling or sending emails or calling the parents and then the more as more then they start coming to games and then more as it they get deeper into the process like after maybe a scholarship offer or whatever they'll come to your house so i've had i think i only had like two two like in-house visits from mm -hmm. what i can remember and it, one was from a juco which is nothing because in california they don't give scholarships for juco it's more like you just get to go to school for free because yeah. you're a state in state it's resident. an extra two years is it it's two years and then you do yeah it's basically to get you to the four year so i got one from a juco mm -hmm. and then um i knew me and clay clay thompson kind of grew up together because his mom my mom and his dad um, knew each other before um, I was born, so All right. I got to Washington State kind of through him, and then I just kind of messed it up. But <laughs> yeah. then I ended up going back to a JUCO. Did I want to say three years because I had to get my grades right. Mm -hmm. Then I went to a four year in Nebraska, like a small NAIA school. Did well, and then I transferred to a school in Portland for my um, my senior year just to be closer to home. Yeah, and it was cold. It's cold there, man. It rains all the time. So. You hate the cold. Yeah, man. I don't, I don't, like I hate. I'm from LA. You know, it's right. It's right yeah, in the middle. True. So, I like a nice breeze. Maybe like I don't know what the y'all the difference is in with Fahrenheit and Celsius, but maybe like 75, 80. Yeah, yeah. In the summer it might get to like 85 or 90, and you might have a random day where it's. I've, when I was in LA, I literally came out the airport and I was like, "This is like Perth." Yeah, with palm trees. Yeah, exactly. that's what LA is. Yeah, other than like when y'all when it get hot here, it get hot. Mm. So I, that's the only thing I. <laughs> I'm adjusting to it because I don't. <laughs> Y'all shit different. But other than like I, I don't know, like everybody thinks I'm weird because I'm from LA, but I won't get in the ocean water. Like y'all, you know, here y'all yeah. just be jumping in the ocean like it's nothing. Yeah, and you I'm don't like, like that. I, no. Why no. not? I, it's stuff in there that can kill me. <laughs> yeah, it's a bunch. It's a bunch. 
Uh, it's a bunch of things in there. Yeah, but you know. could kill them too. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm I saying can. one shark, bang on the nose. Man, dog. they might they might piss them off more. They rip a leg or a face <laughs> off or a nose, and then I'm then that's it. Everybody asks where t- yeah. Everybody asks where Taylor at. Uh, this stupid ass was swimming <laughs> in the ocean with the fishes and didn't make it. Have you tried surfing or anything? Oh, you just don't go in the ocean. Uh, ever. Rye actually, my partner, she got me to get in the ocean once because uh, we went back to her hometown where we originally met. Um, hmm. So. She got me to get on some some something. I don't know what it is. It wasn't a surfboard. It was like I want to say like boogie a board. paddleboard or a boogie board boogie or something board. like that. So I did that a few times. Yeah. But I didn't go too deep. I just went, you know, when the waves yeah. in, I was like there. I caught in it the white Yeah. Right? I, I caught it at the end. So I did, they got me to do that for like two three days because that's something they do like as a family after Christmas they go uh, camping. Yeah. That was like my first. Well, not really camping because they had like caravan and stuff. I'm not camping. Glamping. So I, I'm not. I'm not doing that outside. So, yeah. but. Other than that, yeah, I don't. I'm not an outdoorsy yeah. person at all. But y'all seem to be uh, engulfed in it out it's here. The thing to do, yeah, man. See. You go clock off work and you just go down to the beach. And <laughs> like I'll go sit there. I go sit in the sand. Yeah, I'm not gonna get in the just water. Just not in the water. Yeah, like back home when I used to go to the beach, like um, like my godfather used to work me and my brother out. Mm. So we go because they say the sand is good for your your feet and your toes and stuff like that. So he have us do a bunch of stuff on the beach and then i just go rinse off my feet yeah, yeah. in the water and then get out of there so that's that's my experience at the beach and i don't know in america water's dirty so yeah the water's true. real pretty here so, yeah but uh-huh. beach is actually really good for recovery and stuff yeah especially they, in winter time when you go say that they yeah. do say that it's, it's just, so nice. just a fear thing I, i've had yeah. like sore legs and like hips and stuff i just go in the ocean walk yeah, especially now fun. like oh like i'm real tight everywhere mm. i didn't start stretching until i got hurt for the first time uh my junior year of college so i didn't really stretch or do anything recovery wise until yeah. after i got a serious injury and it was like oh your hips are tight this is why this is happening and yeah then i had to so so um you say your stepdad's dad was he the fa- fa- like father figure in your life yes for sure so growing up I, it was like when i was like real young i don't really remember that much it was my mom my older brother who's another like father figure for me his name's tristan um but and then like my real dad who was kind of in and out of the picture so once i met my stepdad he kind of took the reins of as that role model or father figure he introduced like he was real heavy and like he's real spiritual Mm -hmm. so he like practices islam so he used to take me and my stepbrother like to say prayer with him and then if we wasn't hooping he was making us read the quran like on the way to on the way to go hoop (laughs) we read read some out of the quran or some um, out of like a newspaper just to make sure we was doing something in a positive light and he's real like, I think that's where my chillness comes from to be honest yeah like because he's real down to earth until you like really push his buttons and then it's it's a complete snaps yeah I remember when I was growing up like you know when you, your parents break up some kids rebel I was think I was kind of in that stage mm. And then he asked me to take out the trash one time, and I was like, "Man, you ain't, you know, you ain't, you ain't my dad. You can't tell me what to do." He so enough just Whoops, like, not just hit me up against the wall. He's like, "Bro, you <laughs> can't do that." And I was, that was the, probably the last time I kind of pissed him off so on you, purpose. Did, yeah. Did you like ever sit down and have the chat with you? Like, all right, if you want to play professional basketball, this is what you gotta do. Or? Uh, nah, man. I think it was for him. It was just more of like something to keep us grounded. Mm. That's what because that's why out, sh- out of the yeah because that's my, why my mom initially did it. And I think that's why my stepbrother was so like invested in in me because he used to play football, but he stopped and started playing basketball just so he can help me out. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then he was into some other stuff, and he kind of kept me in line as well. But it was just more of like a a straight and narrow thing. Like use it to get your college play paid for. Use it to create a different avenue for yourself because you know basketball or any kind of sport really opens doors. So. Yeah, he it was the professional thing really wasn't the goal. Like he knew that's what I wanted to do. You know, everybody wanna make the NBA. Yeah, of course. But at a certain point he didn't really he never we never really sat down and talked about it. He just was more like trusting God, believing yourself and then just let the chips fall where they may. Just do the best you can and just stay on the right path. So was your overall goal to make it as a pro? My yeah, man. Not, not I didn't know Nothing about overseas for a while, mm. but my goal was like NBA, NBA, all right, not NBA, G League, like, okay. you know, stuff like that. So, so when once, you're when you went to your college and you're doing classes, yeah. and then you stopped going to classes, <laughs> yeah. did you end up going back to the classes and finishing a degree? Or yeah, I finished. It took me longer than most people, but yeah, I did finish. What'd so you study? I started majoring in business, and then yeah. they put me in accounting, and that didn't work. So I kind of <laughs> changed my major. I majored in communications, and I minored in psychology. Yeah. So, I, like, in the off-season, I would, all, like, 
I don't know. I think just school wasn't my thing. Like, I, didn't, I don't like being told. You think you have, like, ADHD or anything like that? Or? I don't think so. Okay. I think I'm pretty, I don't know. I wouldn't say normal, but, yeah. like, I'm it's pretty, just It's just boring to yeah, sit down. Like, yeah, I don't, like, once I was done, like, in school, I was, like, in class, I was always fine. I did my work, blah, blah, blah. blah. But once I got home, yeah. I'm not trying to do that. I'm yeah. trying to play the game. I'm trying to, I don't know, go be around my friends. Yeah, yeah, know, of course. Take naps. <laughs> so, like, thankfully... When you get to college, you got like mandatory study hall. So that's where I got all my work done. Mm. And then I was, it, then it just came down to studying for tests, which I wasn't very good at. Because yeah. once I'm home, I'm home. I'm yeah. not trying to study extra. But yeah, so. What, a, what but, grades do you have to get to be eligible? To play college ball? Yeah. Yeah, so they changed the rules. Like when I was going, you had to at least have a... Well, basically, you just had to graduate, take the right classes. You had to pass the right classes with a C or better. C, okay. And then you had to pass the SAT or the ACT. But your C's are different to our C's. So our C's is 50%. Yeah, no. That's so yours F. is like 75. 70, 70, 70 is a C minus. 75, 76. I think like 78 is like C. 75 is an A here. Well, see, I should have stayed, went here, just went to school here. I probably would have been better off. But that's crazy that you have to. 75 is not like easy, like. I mean, if you if you're not studying or anything, I, I, would, say, is not easy. I would say if you actually putting the time in, as with anything, mm. you'll you'll thrive in the school system. But like me, I was doing my work and then I would go home and not do anything, so I wouldn't remember or retain any of the information. I just pay attention. Like I think I'm more of a visual learner anyway. Mm. Like if you sit there and teach me how to do something and we're face to face, I'm more likely to pay attention. But if you're telling me to go read a book mm. or go, I don't know, go. Or like listen to you and like a, uh, at a lecture, I'm gonna get bored and kind of do something different. So mm. or I'm gonna, I don't know, think about something different. I'm not yeah. gonna pay attention. So I think that's where I lacked. When when you weren't going to school and they're sort of taking saying you're not gonna be able to play basketball anymore, and then you're like, oh crap, like I need um, to be doing it. Or? Yeah. So after I lost my scholarship and then I was getting my grades right because I couldn't play right away, right right away. Excuse me. But um, so. After that, I just, I literally, that's when I really started, like, working on my game a lot. Mm. Like, just going to the gym by myself early in the morning. Like, even now, that's where I built the habit up of, like, I work out. I, like, during COVID, I used to work out at 3 in the morning. I would go live, go shoot, and then i go work out with my trainer who lived, like, 30 minutes away. Just because there was nothing to do. And you I w- were over east? Yeah. When during I, uh, COVID? During COVID, nah, man. I had, I was, it happened when I was going home and I was coming oh. back to play. So oh, I was okay. stuck at home for probably two and a half years. So for two and a half years, I would just work out on my own or like, yeah. So that's, In LA? In LA. And then like when COVID really hit and they shut everything down, I went to Arizona because Arizona kind of <laughs> does what they want. Okay. That's where my older brother lives. So, Damn. and everything, for the most part, everything was still open. So mm. I was able to go to the, go on actual gym and shoot. Because in LA, man, in my parents' apartment, there's like a little basement, and they had a basketball court. So I was just, I had uh, my old strength and conditioning coach from college kind of, he wrote up like a plan for me to just mm-hmm. some body workout stuff, or if I can get some weights, do that. Yeah. So I would do that shit like at home or outside, and then go down to the basement in my parents' apartment, and it was just like this little, I wouldn't say little, like it was, ten, it was a 10 foot ring, or I don't know how many centimeters that is, but it was like a 10 foot ring, but. It was it was cold. Like one time I saw a rat in there. Like I think that was the most like dedicated time I actually put in to just like working out because you don't have like during COVID Nothing there else. was no alternative. Like and I think like one time I got an offer to go play in Switzerland right when I was about to get on the plane. They shut down. They shut down the season. Then the coach told me it was like nah, you can, it's no point in coming because they just gonna send you back. So yeah. I was literally for like two and a half years just. Just catching up with family because that was my first time being home in a long time and just literally working on my game. Like, I think that's because I wasn't normally like a shooter. Like, I wasn't a knockdown shooter. I was, as you guys can tell, I don't know if you watched, but I'd like to get to the basket and kind of create Slash that up. way. Yeah. yeah. So I wasn't, I wasn't a, like my first, after I left Washington State, I wasn't allowed to shoot threes because I wasn't good at it. Mm-hmm. So he was like, you either get into the basket or you pass it. And it wasn't, he didn't like me, my coach didn't like me raise jump shots because it's, it's worth the same as a layup so yeah. he was just like go get a layup if you can so I didn't I started working on my jump shot more and I think it got better which led to kind of the success I think I had this year mm. with, with my jump shot I think I shot over like 38% from three and it's something I want to build on so yeah. but yeah initially that's where I first I really cracked down 
So are, oh. you, are you like glad, sort of glad that COVID happened because it gave you that time? Like it was, reset? I think it was a blessing in the skies. It forced me to like grow up. I started thinking about like life after How basketball. How old were you? Me, I was, what was that? It was 2019. I was 27. Okay. Yeah, it was 27. I think turned 28 or something like that. It was a while ago. I'm getting old. <laughs> so, but yeah. So when, when did you graduate college? 24, 25? I ended up graduating at 25. 25, okay. Yeah, I started at like 17 though. Like I graduated. Wow. Yeah, I started high, I started college at 17 and graduated high school. And I was 17, turning 18. And I didn't finish till I was 25. Just basically just off my own. Yeah. Immaturity. Just because I wasn't so trying had, to go to school and stuff. You went to JUCO after high school? No, I went to Washington State after high school. And then you lost your scholarship there? I, within the... By the, by Christmas break, they pulled it. It was like... Because yeah, initially, I was like... I got I got in like on probation. So they was yeah. like, you got to you gotta keep your GPA. Like, before I signed it, they was like, you got to keep your GPA above this. Which well, What was the GPA? Just a 2.5. It wasn't anything. Which is a C. Yeah, it's a C. Like a C, C plus average. And it wasn't... It's nothing like... It wasn't nothing hard like in all honesty mm. it's just i wasn't serious about it mm. like i didn't understand that you got to do that part to get to where you want to get to and then on that team did you have clay thompson on that team yeah and did you share a dorm with him was he very different to you like he yeah, took it man. So- <laughs> yeah. like once he knew he was about to make it because he was only there for two years mm. so we don't keep in touch like that anymore but that's when he kind of started to relax a little bit like when he started going through the drive process and stuff like that yeah but when he was there he was just like just just hoop man and he was always like his dad was like a number one draft pick and stuff like that so Mm -hmm. like he i feel like he had the blueprint he kind of knew he tried to tell me i was just oh honestly i was just into the wrong things i was (laughs) there was a partying partying (laughs) women and all that you know not to be like cliche but that was that was that was my first experience at that life and then i went to a after i lost that i went to a juco and uh in uh, Fresno, which is like Central California, Central California, like four hours away from the uh, from where I'm from, mm-hmm. so that was probably a blessing in the skies too, because that coach was crazy. It's probably to this day one of the best coaches I've ever had. Really? Yeah. So that coach is underpaid as well. He, well, he wasn't because he was like oh. a teacher too, and oh, he had, right. like he had like tenure and stuff like that. He, he's not coaching anymore, but he was he was he was well off, man. So mm. he used to take care of us. So, but I was like. On the court or in the weight room or anything like that had to do with basketball, he was an absolute dick. <laughs> like I, I've like if you was like a minute late, like one time I was late because I was finishing up like a uh, like a speech that I yeah. was doing, and the class was right next to the weight room, so he was already teaching the class, and then he was waiting at the door, and I'm I'm rocking up, and he was like, "What you doing?" I'm like, "Ah, shit!" And then I was like, <laughs> "Man, I was just finishing up a paper." He was like, "Oh yeah, okay, cool." Like he walked in, the, like I did my speech. They were, I was late, so I was I had to do my speech as soon as I walked in. So mm. the teacher didn't think I was like BSing. He stand he stood at the back of the uh, the back of the classroom, and he, I don't know. He was one, like he used to wear these small ass shorts, the footy shorts. Yeah, man. <laughs> he never wore underwear under his shorts. Oh, he what? was like the craziest white dude I've ever seen. <laughs> Like in the weight room, like. But anyway, he was just standing there. But he had this like weird stance. He would just be in there like this, <laughs> just staring up, looking me eye to eye. And I was, just, I was just like, damn. So I'm in there shitting myself, and he just, this, he had this face. He was just like, because I did my speech on Candace Parker. It was like a sports, it was like a sports thing. So I did yeah. my, my my project on Candace Parker. So I'm in there. I feel like I'm killing it. He just looking at me all disappointed. Like, Mean mugging you, man. Yeah. And this is like I'm still technically a freshman, so I'm still learning. But I, I kid you not, man. I not knocked the speech out. I went to the house where uh, me and some of the other freshmen were staying, and we was, I was like, man, Coach Maddox was there. He's waiting for me. He's like, oh. they was like, ah, oh, you in trouble. I was like, nah, man. I, I mean, I did everything right. Yeah. But So that afternoon, bro, as soon as I get in there, y'all know what a towel run is? A towel run? Yeah. No. So you get a towel, and then you on the baseline. All oh, you're doing you- it, yeah, man, I'm going back and forth. Yeah. yeah, we do that for like, we, bro, in Juco, we practiced for like three hours. So he had yeah. like this plan, and we've, we didn't get to the plan. You got to keep doing it. That's so I'm in there just, cause I was, just because I was late for doing school. Mm. So I was like, really, like, I'm getting, I'm getting punished for it. But so I did that for like probably like an hour and a bit, mm. and then like halfway through training, he was like, "All right, come here, Tay." I was like, "All right, cool, I'm good." He just didn't let my arms cool off or nothing. He just threw me into a drill. Excuse me, like off the drill up. Yeah, and he was like, "No, get back over there." So I had to do the towel run right back out, right I had to, for the rest of practice. And then after that, the next day, I had to run five miles at five in the morning. Five miles. That's- that's probably like I have, over ten k's. Yeah, I had I had 
think I he gave me like 30 minutes to do it. I didn't make it. Had to do it again the next day. Cause I told you I don't like running long distance, mm. so I just psyched myself out. So it, but and all in all, like he was crazy, but like he knew what he was talking about. Like he mm. was one of those coaches that would like because he played overseas and stuff like that. But he was just one of those coaches that which like everything he's saying, he either did or he can show you how to do right yeah. on the spot. So. Like, in the summers, he would get it. Like, not even the summers. Like, sometimes he had a freshman in, like, the red shirts and stuff like that have to show up, like, 6 in the morning just to get, like, some – some some. we just get up and hoop. Because yeah. he want. I don't know. I think it's just because he wanted to hoop. And yeah, so yeah, he'd yeah. tell us we had to come. How but old was he? When I first got there, he was – I think he was 35. Oh, yeah, so he so could he was, still – yeah, yeah, so he was still moving. So – but he was in there, like, busting our ass, you know, <laughs> drop steps. Spin. Mind you, he only, like, 6'4". Yeah, six four post player try, can do it. He shoot like a not to say in the shorts. Swear to God, <laughs> not wearing any underwear, dude. Like if he posts you up, you get hit with yeah, that. Yeah, like you shit swinging, <laughs> man. But but no, nah, I love him. I still talk to him to this day. Um, but did, he, did he was he involved in your recruiting to get to the next college, the Nebraska? Yeah, was it? Yep. And crazy thing like that that JUCO used to be a powerhouse. Like when I played there, we went thirty four and zero. Like, we didn't Daniel. lose. Yeah, and to be honest, it was only two schools that was, like, you know, JUCO do their own rankings, but, mm. like, California is separate from, like, national JUCOs. We was the only it was, we was the only school to be ranked, like, I think ever, like, number one in the country. That's crazy. And yeah, we ended up getting upset in the, in the fucking playoffs, but yeah. that's another story for Have you day. seen Lost Chance You yeah. on Netflix? Yeah. Similar to that? Ours was worse, bro. Wow. I kid you not, ours was worse. Not like the, the living stuff that some of them had to do. Yeah. Like our like he took like I'm that's what I'm saying. Like he took care of us like off the off the court and stuff like that. We didn't really have to worry about so much. Fresno had money? That school? Yeah. It was I think for the most part they had like they they was one of the first junior colleges ever. So they had like a lot of support. Yeah. And then the city is small. Like we was on T V, we was we was on like cable TV mm. when my first two years there. So we was on TV. We would get meals. Like we'd rock. I don't know if it's legal, but we used to go <laughs> to this place called the Doghouse Grill, and sometimes they just let us eat for free. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was just one. Of, like I, that that made me feel. That gave me a big head because we was like on TV. Everybody was at our like like this is when like Paul George was at Fresno State. Oh, okay. Yeah, which so you got Fresno State, then you got us. Yeah. It was us. It wasn't. They didn't care about Fresno State. Damn. Like, Fre- like the coach was trying to get Fresno State to like play us in like a closed scrimmage. They wouldn't want to do it because we used to whoop their ass in the summer and stuff like that. Crazy. So, so when you when you watch like Last Chance Shoe, you're like, man, some of these kids are like the exact same situation I was in. Like I, I had the exact same mindset. I kid you not. You kids in JUCO, like you get a lot of bounce backs, which essentially is what I was. So. You get a lot of bounce backs and they think they hot shit and then when reality hit them and you get a coach that's like really not going for none of that mm. like he gonna make you work and things like that, of that nature some kids fold mm. or they just put their cool jacket on and then they say they, you know f you and then i'm going somewhere else and then they get to bouncing around which is kind of what i did but so you'd, you'd recommend juco to like kids coming up if they're not quite if, at div if, one level or if you're not I, I honestly think if you're not ready find the right juco for you because mm. you get you get you get a, you get to start on your education, yep. And you're in a place where it's cutthroat. You either gonna sink or swim. Mm. And it, I think for the most part, I think everybody, especially well, in my situation, I came out a better man because of it. Yeah. Because once I felt like I hit rock bottom, so I had to kind of fend for myself. And like you, like I was trying to say, um, like in games, everybody's trying to show out to try to get a scholarship. So you're gonna get somebody's best yeah every single whether they're good or not they're gonna give you their best effort every single multiple multiple teams have div, division one athletes man, on their I, team like, as well. man especially in like the national jucos like outside of california and stuff like that the, well especially nowadays the talent pool has kind of grown a lot but there's it's, it's, a, it's a plethora of talent everywhere so mm-hmm. if you like I, we have like i know east perth like it's a lot of the under 20s that played under 20s this past wobble season or yep. whatever a lot of those i think a few of those kids went over to the states I think ones in Canada playing at, at a prep school, mm. and then the ones in like New York playing JUCO. And I think when they're done, or wherever they end up, when they're done, it'll they'll be better players for it because mm. it's 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 different. Like I think just just basketball, just I don't know. I think the talent pool is kind of just the le- the quality of talent that you play against yeah. is better. Like whereas out here, you might have one or two good players on the team, and then it kind of drops yeah. off. Like, NBA 1's gotten better, because when I first came out here, not to Perth, but when I first came to Australia in general, 
the Siebel was kind of like the the main thing outside of the NBL here. Yeah. So I think everywhere has gotten stronger because of the, the the transition to the NBL one or whatever. But yeah, it's it's come a long way. But I do think for the young kids, I know you want to make the NBL, you want to go to the NBA Academy, this stuff and that. But there's other avenues out yeah, there yeah, to get course. to what you want. And I it took me like I said, I I graduated at 25. Yeah. Yeah. So it took me a while to finish, but. I think I'm a better person for it. Like when it came time to be, to have my opportunity to play professional basketball, I was, for the most part, I think I was ready for it. Mm -hmm. Like granted, you know, you got to deal with the politics of some things that transpire. Some person might know the the right people and they get more, they get an opportunity before you do. This happened to me. I've been cutting Europe for an ex NBA guy just because he was an ex NBA guy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that I wasn't playing well. Like I was scoring like 14 a game, which is pretty decent. And the, the, the league I was playing in, it's just this guy played in the yeah, NBA. Yeah, yeah. And course. the same thing happened when I was uh doing the G League thing for the Clippers. Like I played for the Clippers G League team for about I would say I made it through most of training camp and then some dude came back from Europe that used to play for the Miami Heat. It was like, Oh, you gotta go. Oh wow. Like what am I all Crazy. right, for sure. Like, all right, it's cool, fair yeah. enough. I can't I can't argue with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, get you. Yeah. So so after Juco, you're in Nebraska. And I Nebraska- was in Nebraska for two years. Okay, what type of school is that? That was an NAIA school. Yeah. So and it's NAIA, then it's D3, D2, D1. D1. Okay. So the only thing is NAIA gives scholarships, D3 doesn't give scholarships, and then the rest do. D2 give half scholarships. Hey? D- you can get a full. Oh. You can get a full. But not for the full roster? Nah, the full roster is not on scholarship. Yeah. yeah. So I was there for two years. They was one of the better teams in the country, and I actually got there because one of the assistant coaches from the JUCO I played at, Fresno City College, um, ended up taking an assistant coach position there, and he was, oh, like, yeah. the head of recruiting. He was like, you want to come with me? Yeah, so you you now kicked a player off that team. That's what, I don't know. <laughs> that's, that yeah, I, I'm pretty, that's what I'm saying. It works <laughs> everywhere, so I probably not. Like, I had no business. Like, even, like, my grades wasn't up to par yet and stuff like that. Mm. They just found a way to get me in, and I had to take some extra classes in the summer. Do your, I, do your credits transfer? The way not it, the way college works over there, you got private, you got private colleges, private universities, and then you got public universities, public mm. colleges. So certain courses one one college has, another college might not offer. All right. So those credits won't transfer. Oh, but for okay. the most part, your general education, which is what you take at JUCO, for the most part, yeah, all of that should transfer. Okay. Over. So that's why they it's kind of. If you want to go play at a four-year level, you should get your associate's degree, which is saying that you've taken care of the general education. So when you get, like, the math, science, and all yeah. that history and all that crap, so when you get to your four-year, you can just focus on your major, which is your focus. Yeah. And as soon as you got into Nebraska, you're like, is that when you buckled down and locked in, or were you still out partying? <laughs> I would say when the season started, because I wasn't, po- wasn't going to be eligible for the first half of the season just because of my grades. Great. So I was just like... All right, I'm gonna get through this year and then kind of go from there. But then they, like, I don't know, they found a way. It mm-hmm. was like, all right, you take this class, this class, this class. You get this grade, this grade, this grade. You'll be eligible to play come first first game of the season. So I was like, all right, for sure. Mm-hmm. Like that was that was my, I would say like my fourth opportunity to kind of get my st- my shit together. Yeah, so yeah. I did that. Ended up getting healthy. Well, not getting healthy. This is how I kind of messed up this pinky. I ended up tearing some stuff in this pinky. Mm-hmm. I took a, it was in practice. Just you know, you just jam the finger. Yeah. yeah. So they told me if I wanted to get surgery, I would miss the season. But my coach was like, "Not nah, for a pinky." For yeah, man, because they had to like break it and put it all together and Jeez. stuff like that. But so that coach was like, "What do you want to do?" I was like, "Nah, man, I want to because I've been." through all of these hoops and jumping through in and out of these hoops. I was like, nah, yeah. I'm going to play. So they just gave me a splint that I had to wear when I wasn't playing. Mm-hmm. And it kind of, like, now I can't bend it. But that's right. just the way it is. So I ended up playing. I had a good year. I think I was, like, second in the team of scoring as a sophomore and stuff like that. And then it kind of, the trajectory just went upward from there. Yeah. So it just gradually, each year, the numbers got better. My percentages got better. Did you graduate from Nebraska? Nah. So I then did two moved. years there. And then the assistant coach took another job. So I had a D2 in, uh, like, Northern California where he finished school. Yeah. So I ended up transferring with one of my good – with like, because one of my good friends was going to a school in Nebraska – I mean, not Nebraska, in uh, Portland, Oregon, called mm-hmm. Warner Pacific University. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go there. I'm going to be closer to home, not too far from my parents. They can come see me play, this, that, and the other. Except it's raining. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, it literally rains. It's three-fourths of the year. 
That's crazy. The only time is it in Seattle? Yeah, it's okay. like I would say it's two and a half, three hours from Seattle. Mm-hmm. So, so I went there, and then that's is there anything to do in Portland? Man, it's it's once the sun's out, it's it's a lot to do. Oh, like okay. from like in the spring into the summer, it gets like real pretty. The trees are growing and stuff like that's real green because they kind of build around the trees. They don't, they're like real hippie, hippie like. Yeah, yeah. So you got like the the heavy the heavy smokers and then the yeah, real yeah, yeah. festival kind of vibe. So like I like it's that's second home to me. Like my close friends are there. Like I miss them a lot. Um, but. Yeah, so I went there, had a good year, ended up being like an All American and stuff within the uh, NAI organization. We beat some D twos, some uh, we didn't play any D ones, mm. but we like even in Nebraska we beat some D twos. So thankfully, everywhere I've been, we've been winning. Like I'm, I'm not, I didn't really get used to losing until I kind of yeah, went overseas. Yeah. But um, yeah, so I finished in Portland, Oregon, okay. which was probably my best experience. Just in terms, I had a coach that was. He wasn't like the coaches that I've always had who are like, it's my way or the highway. He was more free-flowing. He'd he listen to you? Yeah, he took my input. Um, but then he was mo- he was more of like a motivator. That mm. makes sense. It wasn't like a fear. It wasn't a fear thing. It wasn't like, do this or this is going to happen. He was more of like, he was more confident. Even his voice was more soft-spoken than all the coaches I've had around me. So I appreciate him. And then I actually got my first overseas gig just because I knew the right person. Where was, was that? Uh, I played in Hungary. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for uh, and you knew the right person. Some more politics coming. <laughs> yeah, man. That's why. That's like I'm. I've been on the. I've been on both sides yeah. of it. But he uh, introduced me to somebody, and then they ended up getting me that that gig. Did that's, you like Hungary? That was a different type of culture shock, just because it was. You got the language barrier. It's colder than Portland. Mm. But when I got there, it was like the end of September, and then it's it's different than here. You know, you got imports coming over here. We train for the most part two, three times a week. Yeah. Like in in Europe, you training for the, depending on where you at, you are training twice a day. Like getting up, you doing yeah. weights and skill work, and then you got to come back later in the day do team practice and stuff like that. So, but you're still like you still love the game, like you know, like I, man, I still want to play. I enjoyed it. It was just hard because yeah. there was nobody that I can like. I can't just like come hit you up and be like, hey, come over. I just need somebody to chill with. I'm yeah. by myself. And then on top of that, and then you got a language barrier and people off doing their own thing. Did you have an agent as well? Yeah, yeah, not anymore. Though. But now, now I don't because I've been. I, I want to live here, so I kind of did everything myself. Yeah. But back then, I did have an agent. Once I got, because that's where I experienced like the ins and outs of the politics of overseas basketball. Yeah. That's where I got cut for the NBA dude, and this was not even two games in. Mm. Like I was, I think I was averaging like fourteen and. Could do that have import less. rules as well? Each 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 country has different import rules, like. Here for not NBL one, but like NBL, they can get three. Three, yeah. Where I was at, you can get three. Okay. Yeah, so I ended up, they had two bigs and me, mm. and then they dropped me for a NBA dude. So I was like, all right, for sure. And that's how I kind of I went from there. Then I played in the UK, and then uh, after that, I ended up playing uh, in the QBL, which is now the NBL one North. Um, Queensland, yep. Yeah, um, and that's where you met Bry. Yep, I played in Rockhampton, where she was from. Yep. So when I, <laughs> funny story, um, when I first saw her like play, she had caught, copped an elbow, mm. and like, you know, I don't know, y'all know, bro, she always on the ground, right? Yeah. So <laughs> she just turned, copped an elbow from some tall girl, and then she just was laid out, like knocked out. Damn. Yeah, that, like she had. Uh, apparently, they said she like died for like, I would say like a few seconds or something like that. But they had to stop the game. Yeah. So I'm coming in like, man, I'm itching to play because I had just went through everything I went through in Europe. Yeah. So I'm itching to play. I'm like, all right. Then the shit get held up for like an hour. Yeah. Just ten. I'm like, who? Like, just get her off the court. Uh-huh. Keep the game going. <laughs> but sure enough, that that was my first introduction of her. And then it's crazy is after that season, with Rockhampton, I went back home and then I ended up signing with a team that was like an hour south. Of Rockhampton, so I, I went to play for a team called Glaston. Turns out, Bry ended up signing there too. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a, I don't know, match made in heaven type yeah. of thing. And did you like Queensland? I do, I yeah. did. My favorite, like if I had to pick, I would live in Gold Coast, man. Really? Yeah, and I, that's what I'm saying. I like looking at the beach. Yeah, I will not get in the water. Not get in there. But I, it, it rains there though. It's yeah, floods. Yeah, humid. Yeah, uh, uh. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's just more of the aesthetic. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm sure it's something close to the to the Gold Coast. I wouldn't say like in terms of because I like those 
I don't know those are like little those apartments where you can like look over yeah, and see yeah, the ocean yeah. and stuff like I don't know it's kind of like that's 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 what I want yeah. so that's the goal did, for you, me. did you live in something like that no no okay this is just something that I don't know man we went like you know we had a bye week so we were just like oh we all going to the Gold Coast got an Airbnb and some yeah. nice little thing a surfers paradise so we I was just like damn I want that yeah yeah, yeah. that that's was nice. like I'm that's it man I want that but yeah how old do you feel I'm asking yeah I turned 33 last. And well, not last October. This this past October. October How many more years you got? Once the money dry up, if they keep yeah. paying, me, I'm a, I'm a, I play anywhere if you keep paying me. Well, once the money dry up, where it starts to plateau and start to go down, yeah, and I'll be like, all right, man. I, you still feel like you can move that, like your pace? man? I think so. I'm 33 now, and I still don't think most people can stay in front of me. Yeah, yeah. Well, in this league, however, I don't like. I don't think most people can stay in front of me. Main thing now, I think at this point, it's just keeping myself healthy. Yeah. Um. Do you only play basketball? Like, do you do? That is it. That's it. That is it. What are you gonna do after? Uh, I'm gonna just probably use my degree. Yeah. Yeah, because I want to work with kids, so that's why I think training. Like, I don't think I'll like get heavy in the coaching. Like, yeah. if I had to go, I'd do like some assistant coach and stuff, like in NBA or something. Cause are you I'm, basketball IQ smart? I think so. Okay. Once I understand what's going on, I think I can adapt pretty well yeah. on the basketball court, just making reads and stuff like that. So. Yeah, when I'm not using my speed, I think I'm more IQ player. Yeah, okay. that's what I think. So, do you, how do you find like everywhere else you've played compared to NBL one, the competition level? I would say just the NBL, NBL one in general is tailor made. It's like suited. It's like trying to mimic the NBA, whereas yeah. like Europe and other places, depending on the level you play at. It's more team oriented. You got the yeah. you got people running sets, and you're not playing like imports come over here, and you playing like 35 minutes a game. Yeah, like over like over in Europe and stuff like that. Depending on where you're playing at or the level that you're playing at, it's not it's not like that. You got 15, 20 to 20, 25 minutes to have an impact, or if you're not having an impact in this bulk of time, to go find somebody else. That it's a lot of turnaround. Yeah, cut whereas, yeah. Whereas here, it's not. It's not really like that. They try to figure it out with the team that they got. Like you don't really have a lot of people getting cut unless they, you know, like unless the import is like a dickhead or yeah. doing stuff off the court that they're not supposed to be doing. So, whereas over there, not nah, strictly performance based. If you if you had a kid or anything like that, would you be like, come just come play NBA one? Like it's it's great, it's fantastic, good competition. Yeah, in a great city. Yeah, I recommend. I tsh, I got uh. People hitting me up now trying to get over here. They ask me how it is. I just get like random DMs, bro. Yeah. And they be like, I just I tell them straight up, like, yeah, if you can get over here, you're going to love it. Yeah. You're not like, uh, you know, Michael Dupree that played for uh, Goldfields last year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and him played against each other in college. Damn. And he, Did you bring like, him over or he was? No. Oh, okay. I just happened. We just happened to be playing. Like, oh, sh like, I know you. Basketball world is small, yeah, man. Yeah, man. So we would like right before the game started he was like man how long you been playing here i was like bro i've been out here since 2017 he was like man how you like it i was like bro i, I put in for like resident i'm not trying to leave yeah so and i think he's i think he's in darwin now like he hasn't left either yeah yeah so he playing in Damn, darwin about hot no. yeah yeah i played there too that's that's a different type of that that pissed me off yeah so got the airplane did but, that tell you before you went there yeah man but this was that's when we went it was in the winter and it was just like it's still 35 degrees, yeah, which is probably like 80, 90. Because, you know, 90, you, I'm 90. leaving, like, when I'm leaving, we leaving Brisbane, we're getting on a plane or whatever. I got a, I got a jacket on, I'm wearing sweats and stuff, hat. Um, you know, I'm dressed for the weather, and then we get off the plane, and it just punch you in the mouth. Yep. It's 37 degrees. Yeah. So I'm like, nah, man. But their their basketball atmosphere is dope. Yeah. Just I guess it's just because there's nothing really there. So mm. they all go to the, like, we played in Darwin, that arena was packed out it's a nice big one because i guess you know they're trying to get an nbl team there I yeah it. but but it was it was that's now that's a good atmosphere but yeah i don't know much about like the off-season league that little thing that a lot of uh, imports go do in the off-season but the nbl one they doing it right up there yeah yeah i mean you're six two which is tall here but we're called too short for the league podcast. Have you been called too short for basketball? <laughs> nah, not yet. Really? I've been called like too small. Skinny, just yeah. Because I was skinny. like, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm way bigger than I used to be. But even when you were getting recruited in college, they're like, he's a bit small. Yeah. They, uh, a lot of coaches, like, kid you not, even when I was trying to uh, go through the process of going overseas, one dude told my agent that his legs were too small. <laughs> okay. And I was like, all right, bro, for sure. <laughs> I can't. I can't change your mind on that because I don't know. I try my best now. These these shits do not grow. Were you bouncy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I guess it didn't even matter though. 
it, not to me. Yeah. But it's it's an eye test thing. If you got yeah. big shoulders at a set like a, I don't know, you know the dude that plays for the point guard for the Cairns type ends now. Yeah, yeah. Big, built like a tank. Yeah. Like I'm, all the all the small guards in this league as well. Are yeah, tanks. for the most part. Yeah. So, shit, it's the eye test. I think for me, if you either you tallest, you tall as hell, or you can jump really high, mm. or you you strong. So you didn't really have to go through a struggle of uh, everyone thinks I'm too small. I have to prove myself. Nah, I think only real time I did was um overseas because yeah. I a lot of teams passed on me just because I was too skinny. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right, bro. Yeah, I, I live with it too. Yeah, <laughs> what are your predictions this season? Um, for us, I think we're gonna be good. It's I think it's all we. Well, Carl did a good job of like retaining most of the guys that. Yeah, because you had a poor start. Yep, but the end you were exactly. So crazy. I think it's more of like carrying the momentum on from that. Like we train once a week right now, and then we do fitness on Thursdays. Mm. So I think this year we might prove somebody wrong, mm. a lot of people wrong, because I still don't think um, East Perv gets a lot of respect in regards to just being unrespected within the league in general. I haven't won in ages. Yeah, that's what everybody tells me. 2013, 2014 or something yeah, like that? Yeah, so it's been a minute, but I do think they're they doing the right things over there, which is one of the reasons why I re-signed. Like, they moved to a better stadium because where we played last season was... Felt, I felt Gray and gloomy. Yeah, I hated I, going I, there. I felt po- like, I don't know, I felt like homeless when we played. Yeah. I felt like... That's how I felt like the season. I don't know, but the season... Now you're in uh, the We Morley, had Morley Rec, yeah. and they built... Um, grandstand for they that. They built a grandstand for it. They're about to do some stuff. I don't know. I was told they're about to do some stuff to the floor yep. to make it look more appealing. Um, so that's, I think, I think this year would be good. Like, personally for myself, I think my goal is just to kind of lead the league in assists. That was my goal last year. Yeah. Where'd you well, come? Fourth? Nah, I think I was like, I think I was like six or something like oh, that. Oh, okay. Some, it wasn't. And even then, I, I just, I, I got out to a slow start because before the season started, I, uh, Spraying my meniscus, I stripped on some sweat, and my whole thing gave out. So, Damn. so I'm, I think it took me a while to like get back in basketball shape. Mm. So, but now, now that I'm healthy, I think it's just more of every once everybody gets back from the holiday break and we kind of hit the ground running, um, we'll be all right. Well, end of season awards when they're announcing a uh, league leader and assists, they'll play this clip of you going. I Man, I hope so. Cause that's <laughs> that was my that's been my goal for a while. Cause It'd be I, crazy if you're like. Point one off, and it's because that one guy you dished it to you missed a shot. Or that's something. that's a pet peeve of mine. If I pass you, like you know, you pass a bigger ball and they like drop it. Yeah, I get the turnover and I don't get the assist. Yeah, so I'm like in my head, I'm like you might not get it the next time around. I'll come back to you later. So as a team, what's the goal? Obviously championship, but like goal is championship. But I think the main, the the most attainable one, because to win a championship is hard anywhere. So mm-hmm. you gotta get a little lucky. You gotta be at right matchups, right place, right time. So I think for us. It's just to make playoffs mm-hmm. and then take care of everything we need to take care of. We've actually, we had a meeting. We laid out some. some a plan. Yeah, kind of like a template. Like, yeah. we got to do this to get this. And a lot of stuff we kind of did towards the back end of last year. It's more like keeping it going, like the rebound count. Yeah. Stuff, turnovers. You, you re-signed like uh, Reese as well? Yep. He's a crazy rebounder. Man, I love him. And yeah. he's so like fun loving. He doesn't really have a care in the world. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, and he's super smart. Oh yeah, he, yeah. He's about to get his. I think his master's in engineering right now. Yeah. So he does a lot of flying. The fly whole family stuff. is crazy. The small. whole damn family. Didn't uh, what's the other one that played for Redbacks? Reece. Didn't he just Chua. finish? Yeah, Chatty. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. up north now for see, his engineer. Yeah. See, that's that's man. Good on him. Yeah, good that was a tough him. loss for Redbacks. Though. I would have yeah. loved to have him back. Yeah, but you gotta, you gotta. Life goes yeah. on, I guess. Yeah. yeah. What are you like personally looking forward to this season? Like, is it the fact that Bri gets to play in the same club or? Yeah, if she chooses to uh, do that, because mm. I'm, I stay out of the way. I kind of let her make her own decisions. So yeah. if she chooses to do that, that would mean the world to me because we haven't done that since 2018 and 2019 when yep. we played in the same club for two years. So that will be dope. Mm-hmm. And just, I don't know, I think we're in the right position to kind of compete to win because I'm a serious competitor. Like even during trainings, I'm boss to the wall trying yeah. to take your head off. And during games, I've... I don't know. I'm pretty locked so in. So you like flip your your mindset, like you're chill and then yeah. Game time like when it comes time to do something, like hoop, I'm like really. I don't care who it is. Mm-hmm. It can be a little baby in front of me. I'm gonna try to <laughs> bust that baby's ass. Yeah, you. I mean, you got Eddie on your team, so that's a baby there. Yeah, Shout but out Eddie, Eddie, but Eddie got uh, temper. Got, yeah, man. He, 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 I love Eddie, but on the court, he is a dick. Yeah, yeah. So man, I had to deal with it, bro. Yeah, so, but I love him. Shout out to Eddie. Yeah. 
All right, let's get into some trash talk. All right. Do you know many players in the league? In the NBA? NBL one. Oh, uh, I know a few. Okay. I know a let's few. Let's say you get to ankle break a player. Who are you ankle breaking? Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess it's a dude from uh from Calgary that I can't remember his name, but he pissed me. He was t- he was talking a lot of shit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, something, something. With, he had a long last name, but he's yeah. like a lefty, or whatever. I'd love to break him off. Yeah, like not even, not even malice about it. Just the them or uh, what's the uh, the shooter from uh, Geraldton? Um, oh, the white guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Not Zach Gatana, but the ah, I but, can't remember his name. Yeah, yeah but the point guard. No, 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 no. It was a he was a big that can shoot. Okay, I can't remember his name, but yeah. him, him too. Can you dunk? Yeah. Who are you dunking on? Who am I dunking on? Yeah. From my team, I'm dunking on Nick Philpo. <laughs> that's that's the main one. You know that uh the party we're at twenty yeah. first and yeah. Philpo is there? I was wearing the Redbacks uniform. Yeah. I remember when we beat you in a grand final. That sounds like, like Nick. Yeah. yeah. He literally comes up to me and goes, Hey, didn't we verse you in a grand final? I was like, Yeah, nice to meet you too, man. Yeah, <laughs> man, yeah, that sounds like Nick. But I I try I yeah, I wanna he never down there when I've tried, but yeah. <laughs> I would want to dunk on Nick, and then from another team, uh, Gak from uh, Williton. Yeah, just because all my all the bodies I've caught over the course of my life have always been bigs, like off tip jams or mm. just catching them because like, they don't think I'm gonna do it. So mm. I would, I would love to catch him. We'll, well see how that goes. I'm yeah. looking forward to the season, man. Hopefully yeah. you can. Shit. Leg the lead assist. Not too well though, because obviously Redbacks gonna win. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Perth oh. versus Perth rivalry. It's like a yeah, derby. Yeah, man. I, I, like, when we beat y'all the second time around, that, that was... Yeah, what'd you end the season? You were like 8-0 and or something. We went like, I think we won six of the last eight. We lost to Jones yeah. twice or something okay. like that. Yeah. I mean, but they won the whole thing, so... Yeah. They yeah, you like... I remember seeing towards the end of the season, you guys kept winning and winning. Yeah. I'm like, what's going on? Like, what, what switched? I mean, I think that, that guy leave the team and then... Yeah. Like, he, I, it just comes down to fit, you know? I don't think he fit the mold... Like, nothing against him. He was a great person. And he yeah. was good. Like, in training, he was good. Just when games came, it was just playing a role. And yeah. I don't think, for the most part, he was – he didn't do that to – he didn't basically didn't do what the coaches wanted. So, they made yeah. a change, and it kind of helped our defense a bit. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you got Big Bobby back there. Yeah. And he kind of cleans up any mistakes that we may yeah. have on the, on, the, on, the, on the perimeter. And then you got uh, Big Lucas. Yeah. And he was 6'10", and he can jump, and he was pretty athletic. So he would block shots, he can shoot it a little bit, yeah. and he can play out of the post. So And then Lee. So once, I think once everybody got healthy, because we went, I think, four weeks without Seb and Jeremy Grace. Mm-hmm. So once all of them came I back. I forgot you had him. Yeah, Holy so moly. once all of that kind of um, came together, and mm-hmm. we got to actually start training together as a group and doing all these things, like all the reads we worked on, started working, people started hitting shots. So See what, does Jeremy Grace's one-legged corner three fadeaways annoy you? Everything, every time he shoots, it's annoying <laughs> for me. Because me and him are usually going out in the training. Yeah. He's usually going out in the training. So he pushing me, I'm pushing him, and then he, he shoot better than me. I'm not yeah. trying to, I don't shoot step back threes like that. So he he hit me on a few of those, and then I'm like, all right, bro, I'm about to foul you. Yeah, <laughs> man, the first time I saw him hit a one-legged corner yeah, fadeaway man. three, I'm like, he put it up in training. I'm like, why are you shooting that? And he made it. Yeah, I'm like, man. what the heck? So, yeah, some of those, he's like, you got, the, I think he, for, his for dad us, never did that. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I've had some conversations with him, but. Yeah. One thing about Jeremy, he just, I think with us last year, it was one of those like the Steph Curry treatment. Like if you if you shoot it and you make it, you, you know that's yeah. Thank yeah. you. Like that's kind of because he's capable. I've, man, he did some crazy shots. Bro. I think we had a scrimmage against Coburn before the uh, season started, and he ran off I think like 15 straight by himself. Yeah, like in a quarter. When he's hot, he gets man. So you just got to ride the wave. Yeah. So. I think it's like it was a like like same thing with Lee. Like, granted, we like on a, these t- this Tuesday Lee we played we was playing at Warwick, which is like some of the NBA one guys from like Junior Lip and uh, Warwick mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I saw Lee dunk on somebody. I'm like, all Roberts? right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's going to Bendigo apparently. Nah, you trying to s- tell him to stay? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying, yeah. <laughs> trying to get him to stay. But so I've seen Lee go for fifty in that league. So I think we. I think we're primed to yeah. like do something this year. Hopefully, big things, big things. Yeah, we got to do our part, but yeah. I do think uh, it's, it's there. Well, it's been a great episode, man. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. And again, thank you to the sponsors for sponsoring this episode, bringing the show to you guys. Follow, like, subscribe, do what you need to do. Go act the sponsor, man. These shirts are actually like nice. They, nah, they're they cool. Good. When yeah. I put it on.
Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice I'm material. I'm not even putting my shirt back on. I'm yeah. Like, this is my shirt for the day. <laughs> Keep that, boy. Yeah, Go act 20 it. for 20% off. And uh, yeah, that's it. Cheers. Ciao. I appreciate y'all.